ticker symbol ENPH is down around 44% for the past year. And this used to be a hyped up and is now a high potential growth stock, which offers an attractive value proposition, having solid fundamentals and high efficiency ratios in a highly competitive sector, which has high innovation in it. So today we'll be looking at Enphase Energy, a renewable energy company. In their annual reports, they describe their operations as delivering smart, easy to use solutions that manage solar generation, storage and communication through a single platform. So they basically offer a platform for houses that already have solar panels installed or which want to install solar panels so they can control everything from energy generation to energy storage or even selling back that energy to the grid. They have transitioned from solar only systems to a complete approach to energy management solutions, such as now offering solar, batteries, EV charging, and much more. They have three main objectives and strategies for growth. The first one being to expand product offerings, which goes just in line with the point we have previously stated, where they have increased the amplitude of their offerings. Number two is to increase power and efficiency and reduce cost per watt. And this goes through the solar panels and batteries that they install in homes. And the third one is to increase storage energy density and reduce installation time and cost per kilowatt, so making it more accessible for all types of clients. Their financial analysis is very sound, and this is where we can tell that it has been a very hyped up stock. It has a return on capital employed of 14%, which is all right, an interest cover of 52 times, which means that it won't have to worry about debt anytime soon, and an impressive cash conversion of 200%. And this is extremely rare because this ratio usually indicates how well a company is converting its net income into free cash flows. And here basically it's saying that it has double the free cash flows as it has in net income, something extremely rare. Then it has a profit margin of 45% and a really good operating margin of 20%. We can see that the revenue, gross profit, and net income have been growing consistently every single quarter up until June 2023. And as we can see, in September and December of that same year, revenues, gross profits, and net incomes have actually decreased, with a sort of worrying decrease in the net margin, putting it back at where it used to be in March 2023. This company is leveraging debt to improve the rate at which it's growing its revenue, its gross profit, and its net income. And as we can see, it has more debt than equity. However, both its current ratio and debt to equity ratio are at a point where they are not scary, especially because in the past quarters they have increased their equity position and their debt position has remained pretty stagnant. In terms of efficiency ratios, these have fallen in the past month due to the fall in net income. However, they have been pretty stable through the past four years and the return on invested capital, which is the one that we tend to focus on this channel, is at around 15%, which is acceptable and better than the majority of the peers in its industry. When we move into the fundamental analysis, this company gets a solid six out of eight ticks, starting with low liability risk and a solid balance sheet. How do we define when a company has solid balance sheet? Well, it's basically that they can cover their short-term liabilities with their current assets. Then they provide extremely consistent cash flows. And this is due to the fact that the majority of the revenues are actually recurring as what they offer is a program that offers a membership. Then this company does not pay dividends. However, they have authorized a share buyback program to reward their shareholders of the firm. Then this company has pricing power, of course, since they're offering a very innovative solution which they have developed themselves. And it is not an offering that a lot of competitors have yet. Now we have two crosses in terms of organic free cash flow growth and organic revenue growth as in 2023 they actually these did not actually grow revenue remained a bit stagnant and free cash flow actually decreased and to end up the fundamental analysis we got to talk about their existing moat and their competitive advantage this company offers a very unique value proposition and a very innovative solution towards energy management systems which is not currently being offered by a lot of different competitors in the US and as such they have been able to develop an existing moat and a competitive advantage also in the form of their recurring clients meaning that the clients that they have already signed it's very rare that they will go to a competitor since they are pretty happy in general with the services being provided by Enphase and it would take a lot more time and be more costly to just switch to a different competitor than to just remain with the service they have right now. 
This company does follow secular trends as they are a renewable energy company and they're providing a service to clients where it allows them to have more control over their own electricity generation and the ability to sell back the remaining of their energy that they haven't used back to the grid. In terms of growth potential, I would incentivize this company to go through geographical expansion, which they are not targeting yet, and also the development of new offerings, which they are developing and they have as part of their strategy as we have spoken previously. In terms of valuation, this company is trading extremely cheap in comparison to their historic PE ratio for the past four years. And why is this? Well, this is no other reason than during COVID, this was a highly hyped up stock. You can see that in March 2021, it was trading at a PE ratio of more than 210 times. And since then, it has actually come back down to a PE ratio of 35, which I believe is still high for a company as unpredictable as this one. However, it makes more sense. And when looking at the free cash flow yield of 5.2%, it is higher than the 3% long-term inflation rate, which may indicate that this company is trading at an attractive valuation at the moment. When talking about risks and possible challenges, the main two ones that when talking about competitors, this is because it's a highly profitable market where you have to be extremely innovative and keep retaining your competitive advantage over any peers that may enter the space. And here, this is where Enphase will need to be very smart with its capital allocation, keep developing new software, keep keeping their clients happy so that they can still enjoy that recurring revenue and not lose it to other competitors. In terms of regulation and performance, these are not the risks that worry me because I do not believe that there will be any possible upcoming regulation changes anytime soon and because I don't think there is a chance of this company not meeting performance objectives since it has been doing so for the time being. Now, in terms of economic downturn or cyclicality risks, I am a bit hesitant about the firm because I believe that these programs are pretty expensive and a lot of clients, whenever they're in an economic downturn or they have less disposable income, they will choose to just avoid things like these to save up and buy other things such as keep paying their mortgages or go out for lunch. Before moving on to the investment conclusion, please remember I'm not a financial advisor and this is not financial advice, so please do your own due diligence. However, I believe that this company offers a very strong competitive advantage. It has consistent cash flows which are predictable and resilient and hopefully in the long term they will be growing. And it has a high return on capital employed which manages to create value for the investor. So overall, I believe that this is a very good company and it is a great investment as long as its growth rates recover and it manages to increase the rate at which its revenue and its free cash flow is growing. So thank you so much for watching. As always, this has been the Cashflow Compounder. Join the free Patreon for extra content and there is a link in bio for a free stock if you join Trade Republic or Trading212.